Property values rose by 14% in St. Lucie County last year. Find out what that means next on Inside St. Lucie. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside St. Lucie, SLC TV's monthly government affairs show. I'm your host, Eric Yule, Communications Director for St. Lucie County. And on today's show, we're going to sit down and talk with St. Lucie County Commission Chair Sean Mitchell and Property Appraiser Michelle Franklin about the relationship between the board and the property appraiser and how it impacts your local taxes. But before we meet our guests, here's some upcoming events and announcements from the Board of County Commissioners. Due to a shortage in hiring summer staff, St. Lucie County's public pools will be open with limited hours and capacity this summer. St. Lucie County operates three pools, Ravenswood, Lakewood Park, and the Arthur Lee Boatwright Pool. For details on hours and operations, visit stlucieco.gov slash aquatics. For the latest updates about all St. Lucie County Commission meetings, workshops, and events, visit our website at stlucieco.gov and click on our comprehensive calendar. And if you'd like to be added to our press release distribution list, send us an email at pio at stlucieco.org. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so we hope you'll follow us on social media as well. We're going to take a quick break. Before we do, we're going to check in with the latest economic development stats with another St. Lucie Works. For 13 months in a row, St. Lucie County's tourism revenue has set record monthly revenue collection numbers. April's bed tax collection was 40% higher than April of 2021. Year to date, the tourist development tax collections are 55% higher than the fiscal year in 2021. Overall building activity in unincorporated St. Lucie County increased slightly in April, with 1,232 permits submitted compared to March's 1,134 permits. Valuations and revenues were above normal for that same time frame. The housing market continues to grow. According to the Florida Realtors Association, the median home sale price in St. Lucie County in April was $380,000, up 28% from last year, while condo values rose by 9% with the median price at $285,000. St. Lucie County's unemployment rate dropped in April to 2.7% compared to March's 3%. Statewide, the unemployment rate was 2.4%. The largest increase in the labor force on the Treasure Coast was in leisure and hospitality with 2,600 new jobs, followed by professional services with 1,600 new jobs, and manufacturing with 800 new jobs. If you work for a local business looking for skilled or trained labor, be sure to contact the staff at the Career Source as they can assist your company with its recruitment and training needs. And if you're an individual looking for a job, they can help you as well. Visit Career Source online at careersourcerc.com or call 1-866-4U to hire. Welcome back to Inside St. Lucie. I'm your host, Eric Gill, and I'm joined by Michelle Franklin, the property appraiser for St. Lucie County, and St. Lucie County Commission Chair, Sean Mitchell. Thank you both for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Exactly. Now, Michelle, we like to have you on this time of year in the summertime because people don't, I don't want to say they don't hear from your office throughout the year, but this is the time of year where they find out who the property appraiser is and what they do. You guys usually send out what we call the trim notice or truth and millage. Excellent, yes, well done. Thank you. <laughs> I've been doing this a while. You have. <laughs> Tell us the folks at home what the property, because you property appraiser's office is a separately elected constitutional office. You don't report to the board, you report to the voters. The voters and the Department of Revenue. So the DOR appro approves, excuse me, our tax roll each and every year. And so this is the time where we're gonna send our preliminary roll up to the Department of Revenue. They will approve that and then we will mail all St. Lucie County property owners a trim notice. And that trim notice shows what? Many things. Many things. All the different taxing districts. Because a lot of people get confused. Commissioner, I know you guys hear it every time this year. You have the highest millage rate oh, in the state and it's, yes. it's the board's fault, but you only control about 36% of the total millages on that That's trim correct. notice. Mm -hmm. So we have 23 different taxing authorities here in St. Lucie County, although no single property owner will have all 23 on their bill, because if they have Port St. Lucie, they're not going to have the city of Fort Pierce. Um, but the trim notice will give that information of which taxing authorities will receive funds from that property owner. So right now, all the commissioners are, are not all the commissioners, all the municipalities are looking at the budget all and figuring where do we want to set our millage rate? And they have to get that information to you by what date? Soon. Soon, yeah. <laughs> so they get it to you by that date so you can then show, okay, well, this is what's going to happen if they go with what's 
if they don't do anything, they leave the millage rate the same. Mm -hmm. If they lower and the max they could raise it, correct? It's so, usually the max they can do. That's, yeah, so yeah. we have, there's a couple of different columns. Yes. One column has last year's amount, mm -hmm. and then a column if budget changes are made, and a column if budget changes are not made. So generally speaking, the budget changes are made. Sure. So that's, that's the column that I encourage people to look at. The third one. Yeah. However, the one if no change is made is the column that would be the absolute highest amount that your tax bill that's will right. be. So in a, in a market like this, in this current real estate market, the taxing authorities, the value is more prop, the That's okay. property is more valuable. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get yes. it all out here. Yes. Um, the property is more valuable than it was last year so in general you, terms. Yeah, <laughs> so even if the taxes, if, the, if, if a municipality or a taxing district decides to leave the mill is the same, your values go up, you're gonna pay more. Even Sometimes even if they lower the millage rate, mm -hmm. your taxes can still go up. And that right. is true. Because the values go up. People forget that equation. Mm -hmm. What you pay in taxes is your value times the rate. Yes. Exactly. And your mill, or I say the millage time the assessed value of your home. And Commissioner, I know you like to point out, like one of the lowest tax rates in the state is Monroe County. It is the lowest. And that's who pays the most taxes. But it's they, the value of their home. But they pay property. the most because of the property and the keys. And is, we're right smack dab in the middle. Once now, you do the math. And yep. I'm committed. The last two years, we, uh, we've we lowered the millage. Uh, and last year it was 0.25. And this year I'm committed, and I believe the other commissioners will. And we'll find out. We're going into budgets in July. I'm committed to lowering the, uh, the uh, millage again this year. Yeah. Because because the values have gone up tremendously. Exponentially. Yes. Why is that? Why have the values gone up? You think? That's a great question. And if I had a crystal ball, mm -hmm. I'd be rich. I could, <laughs> we could we could share that secret. Um, but part of it is, you know, in, in my personal belief, we're we're in paradise, yeah. right? We're not building more land here in Florida. We have a great place to live, work, and play. And so it, it's in part demand. Sure. And you mentioned crystal ball, but you can probably project the next couple of years because there's still growth happening and it takes almost a year or two for that growth to get on the tax rolls, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes. And you know, what people wonder about their favorite commercial property, you know, you don't want to say anybody in particular, sure. um, but you know, like when are we going to get one of X, Y, Z? Sure. Um, and those follow the rooftops. So generally speaking, our commercial comes behind additional single family residential growth. Yeah. And that's where we're seeing a, a larger spike right now um, is in that single family residential sector. And over the years, it's really convoluted and I, the, the way that, because there are a lot of exemptions and it, and it, and it seems like Over every- Over a hundred different types of exemptions. And it seems like every home. other year, there's new exemptions added on. You got your homes, there's like three different homestead exemptions, right, you can get? Two. Two, Two okay. currently, um, but on the November ballot, there will actually be a third for specialized uh, professions. Oh, okay. Like what? Firefighters, teachers? Exactly. Okay. Law enforcement. Okay. Which, and that's a challenge too. I knew one of our commissioners even said, well, let's give another exemption to longtime property owners. But the problem there is the longtime property owners probably aren't paying oh, that don't. higher rate because somebody like me, I've lived in the same house for 22 years. I'm There's still- There's a cap. 3%, it can only go up, my value can only go up 3% every year because mm -hmm. of that, so. Or less, remember, that's based on the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, so it doesn't yeah. even necessarily mm -hmm. go up 3% every Not year. Not every year. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, Florida has a very unfair property tax st structure. Yeah. So the, the challenge that I personally see is when you add exemptions, the more people you put on the bus, the people that aren't on the bus are paying for it. Paying more. And so, you know, it, it creates, further inequity and the have and the have nots. Yeah, unfortunately. And so if folks have questions, they can call you guys and Absolutely, of course. So when the trim notice comes out mid-August, um, you have 25 days from the date of mailing to actually review that and if you have any concerns to discuss those with us. Now that being said, we'll take the phone call any time sure. of the year. Um, but we encourage people to open that mail right away. Get that envelope, you see the red yeah. writing on there, open it up, just take a look, double check that your exemption is in place if you qualify for an exemption, and that you agree with the value as of January 1 of this tax year. Okay. So it's kind of hard to think back, you know, more than half a year back to agree with that value. Okay. And then you all, you always have staff too at our budget hearings. I'm sure you're at Port mm -hmm. St. Lucie's and Fort Pierce's yep. as well. We are. So, because I know a lot of times commissioners, people call, 
Uh, and she, yeah. you know, the, the, ta the property appraiser is right over Around there. The corner. She, she, can, she can help walk They're you the through that. They're the professionals. Yeah. Absolutely. And we do go through, so we have several videos on YouTube that slowly mm. break out each part of the trim notice. So I would encourage anyone who's interested um, to learning about that trim notice to hop on YouTube and you can kind of pause it and grab your notice and flip the pages. And even and your website away. has a wealth of information. You can it search does. up by property mm -hmm. owner, name, parcel ID, and see, mm -hmm. oh, that's in the jurisdiction of poor St. Lucie, not in St. Lucie County, or, you know, so, right. I mean, we, I've had to walk some folks through that recently because of Waste Pro stuff. Oh my goodness, yes. You know, and Commissioner, yes. I'm sure you get that too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you're in the city yeah. limits of poor St. Lucie. Well, I thought call. the Waste Pro contract was with the county. Yeah. There's two separate contracts Correct. with each municipality. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and even we, sometimes we've gotten an email recently, if you recall, Commissioner, someone was upset because the pictures on your website of their house. Oh, had trash in front of it. Had the garbage. But you, that's we, not from your office. Well, some, some of them are. Um, we try hard not to do that, but you know, we happen to be on your property on that given day. Mm -hmm. And right now there is a challenge. There's trash there for There's every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to not catch those. We generally try to, to move up very close to the property and, and exclude that. Um, but if somebody has a concern with their picture yeah. that's posted on the website, please reach out to us. Okay. And you never know when the Google Earth cars drive, and you never know what yeah. they're going to see. We don't have the Google Earth images on our website. Okay, it's all local yeah. stuff then. Yeah. Huh? Those okay. are those are photos that we've taken, awesome. but okay. but I understand it's confusing. And I did want to step back for a moment. Oh, yeah. The trim notice is on the website all year long, for, so you so can that review that trim notice, especially if you were looking at a new property in St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. You can review that prior owner's trim notice and see how many exemptions they had in place what their portability cap was, the amount of that they're not paying taxes on, mm. um, to help you with future planning. And that's what I was gonna mention too. You can't always just look at, well, I'm buying this house, the person last year paid 200 or 2,000 in taxes, mm -hmm. that's what, I'm, you're gonna pay at the value that you bought that that's house correct. at, not the value that they bought the house mm -hmm. at. Correct. Yeah, so that's always, I'm sure it takes some explaining to do. It does, and those are generally the people that have the sticker shock mm -hmm. when it comes to the trim notice. Yeah. So. Well, Commissioner, uh, Michelle mentioned the referendum in mm -hmm. the fall, and there's another ballot or another item on the ballot in mm -hmm. the August primary right. where we're going to ask residents to consider renewing the tax abatement program that's been in place now for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit about that. You know, we're not telling people how to vote for it, but just explain what I can that educate. Is I certainly yeah. can't advocate for either one of them, but I can tell you since I've been on this board for the last four years, I think it's sped up the amount of use that it's using. And four years ago, we had over 80% of our residents driving out of the county to go to work every day. We have that number down to 64%. And the reason is that these big companies, you talk about Amazon, you talk about FedEx, Cheney Brothers, Tamco. Tamco, for example, we gave them a tax abatement, and this was prior to, I call it BS before Sean, mm -hmm. but they paid about $425,000 in taxes prior to their expansion. After the, their expansion, they paid $903,000. Now, the, uh, the school district got over a quarter of a million dollars, the fire district $125,000, even I believe around 38 k to uh, Crosstown Parkway to pay for that. So these, we live in a capitalistic, uh, we, capitalism, that's what yeah. the United States is built on. You have other uh, municipalities, not only in this state, but around the southeast where they have, they incentivize companies to come here. So what we have to do as a county, and, and that's why I believe they're bringing it to the, to the voters again, is do you want to bring good paying jobs above a certain scale? And what, what the beauty of this is, the way it was set up, it's not like years ago when uh, the city uh, had VGTI and Torrey Pines. Those were dollars that were thrown at them. Yeah. We don't put up any dollars. We're not on the, on the hook. It, in case it doesn't, uh, doesn't come out the way it should have been, we're not on the hook. They have to pay the full tax. Yeah. And it's just been a really jobs incentive growth thing for our county which I think, you know, is a positive thing. And I can only talk about the, the direction we've had in the past. I certainly can't tell you, yeah, you citizens got to vote for this or don't vote for this. Sure. That's not, I'm just here to educate. But yeah. it's men. And if you look down the road, when, the, when that tax abatement goes away, if you want to reduce the millage in our county, the way to do that is that rooftops won't be paying for this. Big businesses and corporations that are building these warehouses and things, that'll be, be being paying more of a bulk 
to, to run our services for our county. So yeah. I think it's a beautiful it, thing. It's important to note too that it's a temporary abatement. So the yes. 10 years is the max. So if a company comes in and they're paying it higher than the average minimum wage, I think is $28. Mm -hmm. So if they're paying $28.50 an hour, right. the board can say, well, we'll give you a five year abatement, mm -hmm. but they still pay the school district tax, the fire district, all the accepted county mills. That's correct. And then, but there are annual and it can go on broker one, uh, ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent, up it weans until them it off. Yep. weans them off. But it's a job incentive, and I understand. Comp you know, corporations are they're saying how many square feet and what does it cost per square foot. If we can help that company to stay here locally, because yep. if we didn't have these programs in place, Tamco would not be here. I guarantee you that. You wouldn't have FedEx here, you wouldn't have Amazon here. They would have went to uh, places like Birmingham, Alabama, and other places that are offering those incentives. Yeah. And that's a good point too, it's not just relocating companies here, mm -hmm. it's expansions. Maverick Big Boat time. Yeah. Um, still paid $228,000 in taxes yeah. some last year yeah. and created a hundred and something, something new jobs. jobs. Yeah. Yeah. At, at a, and it's, you know we were doing a presentation to the Citizens Budget Academy and mm -hmm. they made a good point too of these companies then also help invest in the community. They sponsor oh, golf tournaments absolutely. and you know, United Way things. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a, a, a real trickle ripple throughout the community sure. when, they, when we have these incentives in absolutely. place. And the voters have approved the last three, uh, three times, last three, every 10 years mm -hmm. it has to be renewed. And so they'll be asking again in the August ballot. There was something else on the August ballot tied to, to the property appraiser though, right? November ballot. November. Yep. Are on we the have November. two, um, Amendment 1 and Amendment 3. 3 was related to the additional homestead exemption. Um, and the first amendment was related to um, like a storm hardening. So okay. those properties that flood are- Flood resistant are in, programs. Yep, flood resistant. Um, mm -hmm. So that if you, for example, if you were gonna put your house up on stilts, um, mm -hmm. we as the property appraiser's office are required to look at that as new construction. Um, and so this amendment will allow a tax incentive. Okay. Does that include solar too, or just is it more hardening? Hardening okay. for storms. Huh. That's why I understood it also. Uh, okay. Impact resistant windows, maybe. Yeah. I should do I, not should believe I go that. Down that road? Yeah, we'll, we'll have, we'll have to look down that. I'm not. I, I'll double <laughs> I'll check. Hire a lawyer. They go we'll through find multiple <laughs> revisions before they actually make it to the ballot. Sure, so we'll, sure. we'll have to look at that. Well, Michelle, is there anything else about your office that you want? What's the biggest misconception you think voters or residents have about the property appraiser's office? Um, probably confusion on our responsibilities, and we've kind of touched on that. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to file your your deed with the clerk of the court. Mm. You know, I'm going to place a value and help with exemptions on there. The tax, tax collector is actually going to mail yeah. the bill. Um, you know, and those taxing authorities are going to work with that. You know, to establish a rate. Um, mm. So th that's probably the misconception. But if I if I had the opportunity to say one thing, if, if they didn't hear anything else, <laughs> if they just hear this one thing, that if you have questions regarding the value or exemption of your property, call us. We're here, it is our pleasure to assist, so call us. It is, it is not something that is easily answered and can be done in a, in a blanket fashion because Florida has such a unique property tax structure. So call us, we'll look at your individual property and we'll, we'll speak about that property. Commissioner, what about you? What do you think is the biggest mis misconception from a county commission standpoint? Well, I think you alluded to it before, you know, uh, I constantly hear that we have the highest millage, even though we've addressed it and last year we gave $12, $12 million back to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. People have to be cognizant of the fact that we're right slap dab in the middle. Is there always an opportunity to lower taxes? And low Absolutely, and I'm a big proponent for it. I'm a fiscal conservative when it comes to spending taxpayers' dollars but it's the assessed value of your home times the millage. Like, because as you alluded to before, Monroe County, lowest millage in, in, in the state, that's awesome. But they also pay the most in taxes because of the value of their properties. And some of the tax rates we pay were voter approved. You know, there was almost Absolutely. a full mill increase just for the school board. School board. And that's coming up for an annual too. That'll be on the ballot too. And that mm -hmm. money was specifically to go to teacher salaries. SROs. School resource office and mental mm -hmm. health services, mm -hmm. which I'm sure everyone needs these days. Yeah. And, and you've got a daughter who's a school teacher. Absolutely. So I'm sure she, yeah. you know, would yeah. appreciated the voter support there. Absolutely. And, and maybe this new amendment too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Get some incentives uh, for her. Yeah. Those tax breaks. So. Anything else we didn't get to mention, Commissioner, other, coming up with the budget that you uh, want folks to know other than? I'm excited this year, as always. Uh, I think there are a lot of departments are uh, need some help this year. 
We, it, it seems to me like we've been playing catch up since I've been on this board for infrastructure, septic to sewer, all the things that we got big dollars from the American Rescue Plan that I, I insisted and so did the other commissioners that let's be shovel ready, let's do the engineering, let's do the design because I fully felt, and I was right for a change, I said that we would either get through a reconciliation or through a bipartisan uh, uh, fashion that we'd get an infrastructure bill, and we do. So there's a lot of more dollars, a lot more federal dollars that are coming down the pike that we can utilize as a county because we're shovel ready. Yeah, because these monies have to be spent within a certain period of time. And to spend that money, you have to have the bodies and the seats here at the county to Absolutely. spend that. And you know, yep. and if you look back to our staffing levels, we're still behind where we were. We have a hundred thousand more residents, and we have approximately a hundred less employees for the county. So yeah. we are a lean machine. Yeah. But there are, you know, I. I you can see planning. Planning has probably, each one of our planners, the senior and the junior planners, probably have 50 issues on their plate. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, we need to make sure that uh, speed to market, and that's your permitting process, that we're you know a well-oiled machine. Sure, and then I see too, sometimes when we post job postings, we get beat up for some of the salaries mm. being too low, you know, and it's I know a, it's that's a, something. It's a worker's I mean, market, but, but, it's, but. A, it's, a mar it's a worker's market right now. Yeah. I think we all know that. For years we, uh, and I'm not blaming or casting this, you know, any aspersions at anybody, but for years we outsourced jobs. We shipped all our manufacturing to China. We made independent contractors of construction workers. And all those things came to a head. And I think we're paying for those sins in the past because the workers now, it's a workers market. Yeah. Everybody's clawing for, for help, for workers and things of that nature. So yeah. yes, we don't want to lose somebody who's really good and beneficial to our county because the private market's going to pay them a bunch more. Yeah. And then you got to start all over with the training and all the knowledge that that individual and we've lost some really dear, Does close friends of mine that not only on a personal level, but on a professional level, that were Cracker Jacks. And because, you know, they got paid a lot more money to go elsewhere. Yeah. And so we had some retirements too in the mm -hmm. past year. You Absolutely. Know? Yep. So, yep. Well, it's been a, it's been a, we've seen that in the office as well. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Anything else we want to mention before we wrap up? I just want to thank you both for the opportunity to share and, and to hopefully in, you know educate some of our property owners. Absolutely. Well, we know we'll have you back on other shows. We do other other programs throughout the year. So. Well, now, Michelle, I just want to thank you because you are an, an accessible person out of our constitutional officers. You're out in the community, and to me that means a lot. It's just not you're not in your office all the time. You're accessible. I know that if I've had issues or other individuals, they say, we'll call Michelle's office. She does it right away, and uh, it doesn't make a difference to her she'll do it yeah. thank you and yes. that's that's a credit to you boy yeah. thank you and we, we see each other often out we in the do. community yeah. so it's, it's great great all right well don't go anywhere we're going to take a quick break and we'll come right back and wrap up the show Public works crews continue to improve the drainage and swales along Melville Road which tie into the new stormwater treatment ponds in that area Melville Road between Ulrich Road and Russ Road will be closed all through traffic between July 15th and August 15th. This closure will be in place while drainage improvements are installed. During this time, motorists heading north on Melville Road should detour west on Ulrich Road, north of Oleander, and then east on Midway. Motorists heading south on Melville Road should detour west on Midway Road, south on Oleander Avenue, and east on Ulrich Road. Motorists in the area should follow directional signs to access properties affected by this closure. This overall project is about one-third of the way completed using St. Lucie County staff. This phase of the project is expected to be finished in the fall of this year. Funding for this project comes from the 2008 voter-approved Hassent sales tax and the Department of Environmental Protection grant. The $1 million roadway improvement project continues on Seminole Road for the installation of guardrails and millings as part of the county's effort to reduce maintenance costs and improve safety. The 2.5-mile project from Indira Road to Immokalee Road will include the realignment of the road with drainage and utility modifications, including the installation of new culverts. The project should be completed by the end of August. Contractors performing the work are South Florida Land Clearing, TSI Disaster Recovery, Asphalt Paving Systems, and Florida Roadway Guardrail and Signs. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Inside St. Lucie, and we hope you'll tune in again next month. If you have topics or subjects like see covered on the program relating to St. Lucie County, give us a call at 772-462-1791 or send us an email at pio at stlucieco.org. And if you'd like to see previously aired episodes of this or other SLC TV programs, visit our YouTube channel at youtube slash stlucygov. I'm your host, Eric Gill, and for myself and the staff, thanks for watching.